Did you ever notice that you have a third eyelid in addition to the upper and lower lid? You know who else has a third eyelid? Plenty of animals, including sharks, crocodiles, and birds. The third eyelid can sweep across the eye, but is translucent enough to maintain vision. And this helps to moisten and protect the eye. At this point, you might be wondering, where is my third eyelid? Well, if you look really closely at the inner corner of your eye, you can see this glistening pink membrane, and that is your third eyelid. Compared to these other animals, your third eyelid is tiny, and even if you try really hard, you can't bring it across your eye. It's not exactly functional. So why is our version of the third eyelid so unimpressive? And if it doesn't work, why do we even have it? By answering this question, we can understand a lot about how humans have evolved. Let's get into it. The third eyelid is an example of a vestigial feature. It's a feature in our body that isn't there because we need it, but because our evolutionary ancestors did. Thousands or millions of years ago, this feature was useful for our survival, but then our environment and our lifestyle changed, so the feature became less essential. And over time, it became smaller and less developed and ultimately less functional. The third eyelid is a useful protective mechanism for sharks because they attack their prey head on. And for falcons, they dive through the air really fast, sometimes over 300 kilometers an hour. So they need to rapidly blink their nictitating membrane to spread moisture across the eye and clear out all the debris. We humans don't really do these things. So our third eyelid has become vestigial. But vestigial features go way beyond eyelids. They can be entire organs, anatomical structures, genes, and even behaviors. First of all, did you know that you had a tail as a baby. During weeks four to six of embryonic development, all humans have a tail containing multiple vertebrae. But by week eight, that tail has basically gone away and the vertebrae have fused together to become our coccyx, our tailbone. The coccyx is a vestigial structure left over from around 25 million years ago, when our ancient human ancestors still lived in the trees and traveled around on all fours. When we started walking upright on the ground, we lost the tail because it probably wasn't helpful and maybe it even got in the way. But some Sometimes in embryonic development, the tail doesn't go away and people can be born with a tail protruding from the body. This structure contains muscles, bones, and nerves. So it's even capable of movement. The longest human tail so far on record was 18 centimeters and it was removed from a teenage boy in India. Or check out this crazy footage from the 1930s showing off a vestigial behavior called the Palmer grasp reflex. If you put something in the palm of a baby, it will automatically grasp it and they can be really strong. Look at them just hanging off this bar. The theory is that when our ancient human ancestors were living in trees, it was helpful for babies to cling to the mother as she was climbing around. And so this instinctual behavior has stuck around to an extent. I have to mention that things can get a little bit controversial when we're deciding whether or not an organ or a structure is vestigial. So for example, in herbivores, the appendix contains bacteria that digest up fibrous plant material, and that helps the herbivores to get nutrition from things like bark and leaves. But in humans, the appendix is much smaller and for the longest time, we thought that it was a vestigial organ and it didn't really do anything useful. In fact, maybe it was more of a hazard because it could potentially get infected and inflamed and you know, you'd end up having to remove it. But there's a new theory that the human appendix acts as a storehouse for good gut bacteria. And if we get sick and our gut microbiome gets unbalanced, these good bacteria can come out and recolonize the area. Pretty cool, right? So it is possible with some of these vestigial features, they're not truly vestigial. They just have some sort of other function that we don't really know about. Anyway, I want to hear from you guys if you know any other vestigial features. 